is making the front pages of the uh, global newspapers is social and political campaigner Susan Fajana Thomas. Very good morning to you, Susan. Good morning. Let's start with that story because, of course, it's on a lot of newspapers. Um, I'm particularly interested in, in the, the role of the judges in all of this in South Africa. It sounds like South Africa's High Court are pretty furious about uh, how the Sudanese president was allowed to leave. But where is that fury being directed at? Is it being directed at Bashir? Is it the uh, South African government? What's your take? Yeah, I think the fear, the fear is being directed at the government, at South African government, saying that they flouted their own uh, laws. But having said that, uh, I know with the uh, with, with, with South African government aligned, obviously it was South African government that allowed him, the, he was helped to a military base mm. before he took off. And he was welcomed he and was, he was rolled he, out the red he, carpet. That, that, that's, that's correct. So it is a... It is the government, but what I think the mistake, I think the, the mistake started from the fact that he was actually invited to that summit. He mm. wasn't... The, and he was always going to be protected. That he was always and, going because there where, is immunity. That's where the conflict for yeah. the government, they put themselves into a very tight corner. That, that was the conflict because they have granted... But she immunity that he can come with we're going to protect you and that's exactly what they've done but this is going to to go or put the judiciary in South Africa absolutely at loggerheads with the leading ANC government there is this going to weaken Zuma because he's got he's just given more ammunition to the opposition yeah, it's just giving the more ammunition to the opposition, but bearing in mind that, unlike this country, the judiciary and the executive are not that. Uh, there are regular interference from the executive with the judiciary in most of African countries. But one, one group is supposed to set the laws, the other is supposed to, ensure, to, to, the, ensure... to enact them, and all of a sudden, uh, there was one newspaper that was suggesting that really they should have opted out of the ICC uh, obligations before he was invited into the country. That, that is what, that's what they're saying, but uh, it, it would be a shame for any African countries. I think the African countries uh, be resentful of ICC at the moment. They think they're being targeted, their leaders are being targeted on like the Middle East countries where they've got leaders who's uh, committed war crimes and ICC are not doing anything. Because of that, they beat, uh, uh, there's that resentment. But having said that, it will be sending a very negative message if they decided they want to opt out of ICC. But it does sound like that's going to be the next move. I and mean, we were speaking to M. Salisi Masango yesterday, our South Africa correspondent. He had been talking to an ANC official saying that the International Criminal Court was largely irrelevant. We've got the Star newspaper here mm. reporting that a member of the ANC National Executive Committee saying they'll start procedures to remove South Africa from the ICC altogether. I mean, do you think that's likely? And, and where's that going to put South Africa on the international the, the, stage? The, I don't think that will happen but they, they like you said there are talks about that and not just South Africa I think what they want to do they won't want to exit uh, ICC alone what they want to do is to lobby other African countries to say we have been treated unfairly let's get out of this treaty that is that would be their uh, their way of dealing with it I don't think they will solely say we are tired, we don't want to be part of it. But we've got sort of criticism coming thick and fast. We've got Ban Ki-moon at the United Nations. We've got Amnesty International slamming the conduct of South African uh, authorities. We've got the United States uh, saying much the same thing. Do you think this is signalling a shift away from sort of Western bias and, and Africa really focusing on its own issues and wanting to deal with this kind of in-house? Yes, I think uh, it, it is. Uh, they, they are doing that again. That is even part of why the African leaders are a bit uh, 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 resentful. I think they don't want international interference. But if they don't want international interference, because what South Africa is doing or what the leaders are doing is sending a wrong message to victims, I want to see African come together within a AU to have a way to deal with, with, with this. Because this is a man that I've been accused that I've either directly or indirectly supported uh, the military in this country to kill a lot of civilians. So it, it need to be it need to be accountable for that one way or the well, other. Well that's accountability. If if they um, 
not just South Africa, but other countries try and opt out of ICC because it, the, the Rome statute is is uh, not mandatory. It's, mm. it's something that people, the, the countries can opt years, into. Yeah. What's going to happen next? Because if nobody outside of the continent is holding what has happened on the continent to account, holding a mirror up to the issues there, who's going to do it? Do you think this is something that South Africa either wants to brush under the table or they want to deal with it and actually kind of bring these issues to the fore? If that's the case, then surely uh, Al-Bashir should be uh, held accountable for these actions. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with you and I think many Africans agree with the fact that it needs to be brought to justice. But having said that, they can do it in Africa. Having said that, what happened in South Africa in the last couple of days have actually put African leaders in a very difficult situation to argue that we are not saying we're happy or we, uh, we're comfortable for a leader to, uh, 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 to support or encourage genocide in his country and get away with it. Mm. Uh, going forward, let's look at some of the positives that we think came out of the, uh, out of the African Union summit. Uh, this really was overshadowed, but do you think there was some positives that came out of the two-day yeah, meeting? Yeah, there were positives that came out of the, uh, of the two days. It is a, it, it is a good uh, summit for African leaders to come together, talk about the economy of each country, talk about... Uh, uh, or, or um, collaborative working, talk about democracy, which is important. One of the things that is really lacking in most African countries about the way they, 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 the process of democratic system that are not, they claim to be a democratic country, but uh, they don't really practice the, the what you call the... Uh, it's exercised in different ways. It, in different it's exercised in different ways, like in Nigeria, I coined the word saying Nigeria is got the Niger crazy, which is uh, the sort of democracy that operates in Nigeria, which is very different from other... Uh, democracy in other countries. But there are the countries world. with problems. Look at what's going on with Pierre Nkurunziza in Burundi. There are other countries where uh, you've got presidents that are desperately trying to hold on to, to power. This is just a talking shop, surely. The, within the AU leaders, you haven't got some of them saying to other leaders, well, you really ought to step down now and you should let a democracy rule. Yeah, the, the, uh, again, when you have somebody as Mugabe as the chair of the AU, so saying to somebody <laughs> yeah. to step It's all right down. for me to stand, <laughs> but, uh, but you, can't. You, you can't. So that is a bit difficult. It is about the leadership, and uh, it, that is difficult for them to say. And for some reason, in African countries, the reason I'm not too sure, they don't see having two, three terms as something that is not really democratic, that you need to give other people the opportunity to govern. They don't see it that way. But also reflect the, the power of the people, if you like, or at least the opinion of the people. Yeah, in, in, terms of, in terms of elections, yes. In terms of elections, yes, it reflects the power of the people. But what happens during the electoral process? That, that brings the outcome of having someone in power for 30 years. It's not good, is it's it? It's not good, it isn't. Uh, Susan Fajan and Thomas, we will, well, we've covered one uh, subject in depth. We'll have a look at some of the newspapers later on on This Day Live. But for now, thank you very much. Thank you.